Good morning, Brett Eliasson here, joined by Tyler Seltzer. Today we're talking about something that many people in Colorado could be exposed to uh, because many people in Colorado own pets, own dogs. What happens if your dog bites another dog, bites another person uh, after provocation? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So Tyler Seltzer is our resident dog bite expert. Uh, and so I'm gonna let him take the lead on this one. Tyler, talk to us about dog bites. When you're charged in Colorado with your dog either biting another dog, another domestic animal, or even a person, you would think that this charge is as old as time. This has been happening for a while and you'd think it's pretty basic. It either happened or it didn't happen. But these cases in Colorado can be quite complex. And when you're charged with this, the specific charge or the law that you're charged with violating is unlawful ownership of a dangerous dog. And I think it's important to acknowledge that my experience with these cases is oftentimes when there's a bite or an attack, the dog itself isn't actually a dangerous dog, but rather what we're looking at is there was some kind of strange or unique circumstance or situation that went on that led to this, this incident or this attack. And some of the ones that we've seen at our office include, you know, um, a dog acting, you know, in self-defense. It was nipped or bit first and only responded. Or alternatively, maybe it's the dog who um, just had an operation or some kind of medical situation that's caused it to be particularly vulnerable. Uh, can still be out and about, but it's just vulnerable, got attacked, and responded. And, you know, we've also seen one where um, a dog was poked or prodded in the eyes um, by a small child. So whatever the reason um, that led to the bite or the attack, it's something that needs to be taken seriously. And it needs to be taken seriously, not just because of the harm to the person, but also the potential criminal consequences that this can have for you as the owner of the dog. And potentially even more important, the fact that in these cases, a frequent dynamic is that the dog needs to be put down due to the attack if you take a conviction in the matter. So let's break that down a little bit. You're saying me as the owner would be charged. They don't just consider my animal if, if the dog bites another dog or a person. Yeah, absolutely. It comes down to you as the owner. You're going to be looking at a charge, but like I said, it's going to impact you. It's going to impact your dog. It's probably going to impact your whole family because these can be expensive cases. These can affect your criminal history. Um, they resolve themselves in a wide range of different ways. What level of offense is this, excuse me, in Colorado? Yeah, what level of offense, how this is going to be charged, and when we talk about level of offense, we're talking about what is this charge as? Is this a felony? Is this a misdemeanor? If it is a misdemeanor, what class of misdemeanor is it? And on these cases, it's going to come down to who was attacked or bitten and what the result of that injury is. So in a situation where uh, your dog bites a human and it just causes regular bodily injury, nothing too serious, you're going to be looking at an M3, which is a class three misdemeanor. It's the lowest level misdemeanor, still a misdemeanor, still punishable by time in jail, but it's the lowest level misdemeanor. So that's bodily injury to a human. If you have serious bodily injury to a human, you, instead of looking at that low level misdemeanor, that M3, you're gonna be looking at the highest level misdemeanor, which is an M1. And then finally, if we're still talking about a human, who's the victim, um, and it's not just an injury, not serious bodily injury, but if it's death, then you're actually looking at an F5, which is a, a low level felony, but it is a felony and it would be a felony on your record. That changes if your victim is another dog or another domestic animal. If your dog injures or causes the, another dog to die, that's going to be filed as a misdemeanor, as one of those low-level misdemeanors as well. Okay, so let's try to break that down a little bit. If it's a low-level injury, let's say a scratch more than a real bite, that could be charged as an M3. But once we get up into the serious bodily injury territory, and the law defines serious bodily injury as anything that has a substantial risk for permanent disfigurement or loss. So under that definition, a scar could technically be serious bodily injury. If that's present, it's then a class one misdemeanor. Uh, however, if we're talking about the death of either an animal or a person, then we're getting up into felony territory. Is that correct? Just to specify, when we're talking about the death of a person, we're definitely getting to that, that felony territory. That's where we need to be extremely extra precautious on how we handle the case. But if an animal, if we cause the end of a life for an animal, that is going to keep it in the misdemeanor range. 
Well, thank you for clearing that up. Obviously, I was mistaken. And it's important to realize on these cases, it's not just the criminal side of it. It's, just, it's not just the class of offense that you're charged with, because an important dynamic in these cases is restitution. And restitution, in essence, is just generally putting people back where they were before any harm or incident occurred. And in these cases, when we're talking about um, maybe an animal dying, that's going to be some restitution. And the court in this statute, this law defines restitution as the amount that it would take to um, basically put the family back where they were. It's going to be to repair or replace the dog if they're, if they're deceased to get a new dog or a new animal. It's going to be any medical expenses that were inquired um, or incurred as part of the attack. And finally, it's going to be the extra costs associated um, outside of medical expenses with dealing with the replacement of the animal. So that can be um, having the deceased animal removed from the property um, or anything like that. So restitution, it's an interesting dynamic of these cases, and it's almost always present. Now, you had mentioned earlier that as a consequence of these cases, uh, the dog or, or other animal may oftentimes need to be euthanized. Can you talk a little bit about what requirements uh, may be placed on a dog or an animal in place of Yeah, like you said, first things first, one of the most important things for us as a goal, and ideally potentially for y'all as dog owners, is to keep the dog alive. And if the dog has caused the death of another person or another animal, that's going to be really difficult to do. Um, and the law says that the dog shall be put down, but um, there are ways to resolve the case that don't necessarily involve the dog being put down. Beyond that, let's say we're able to keep the dog alive, which is a win in and of itself. There, like you said, could be some extra conditions that the judge may order that you comply with as the dog owner. Some of those conditions can include anything from making the dog wear a muzzle or wear a leash whenever it's outside of the house, um, potentially even put a specification for how long that leash can be, maybe four feet, six feet at the max. Other things include having a microchip inserted into the animal so that it can be tracked. And then also taking some steps on your property, at your house, your apartment, um, to increase the likelihood like this, something like this doesn't happen again, whether that's making it more secure at your house. Um, with these cases, your dog can be deemed a dangerous dog even if it doesn't attack or bite a person or an animal. It's important to acknowledge that this dangerous dog definition, it also applies to animals which a reasonable person could, be, could believe, based on the tendencies of that animal, that they may be attacked or killed by that animal. Um, so it's not just a bite, it's not just an attack, it can be just they reasonably believe that your dog may bite or attack them. And that's an interesting uh, concept that we come across in the law quite a bit, a reasonable person. Uh, we'll save that for a later video. Is there anything else that you want to discuss about dog bite cases? They're, they're complex cases, as we've been discussing today. It's important in Colorado that you have an attorney who's familiar with the ways, the different ways that these cases can be negotiated, the different ways that these cases can be handled, the defenses and the affirmative defenses that you can use in these cases. Um, and it's important to speak to an attorney who's familiar with all of those routes. We here at the Law Office of Jacob Martinez are familiar with those routes. I would love to talk to you about your case, your animal, what we can do to put you guys in the best position to be, to be in, in your case. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to check out other videos on our YouTube channel and on our website for more information about other types of criminal offenses in Colorado. Thank you. Thank you.